Everybody. Good day to everyone here. If you seeing me, yes, that means it's Wednesday and I got that midweek medicine for you. It's me, Miguel Brown, your mindset and motivator, and I got something good for y'all. Let's dive into this. First and foremost, let me give y'all a disclaimer. If you do not believe in God and the Lord Christ Jesus himself, then let me give you a disclaimer now. You might want to turn this off because I don't want to offend you in any kind of way. I'll give you two seconds to do that real quick. All right, let's dive into this. Before I do anything else, let me make this bold statement and let me say to everybody right here, right now, that I can hear my voice. God gave me one thing and one thing specifically today, and I'm going to say it and I'm going to do it. And that was this. He told me, he says, I did not call you to tell them. I called you to show them, and I'm going to show you. That's what I was brought here for. That's what I was sent here for. I'm not just going to talk something I read. I'm going to show you by my life, by, by just being an open book, right? Let's keep on going. Um, a year ago, uh, I delivered a couple of messages, but more importantly, some, something happened in my life that I revealed to everybody that had to do with myself, my wife, my mother and my ex-wife and that was my mother asked my ex-wife to move in so that uh she could help her they could help each other financially now us not being in a good space that was not okay with me i was completely pissed off by it i hated it, it, I, it I was hurt by it i felt betrayed by my mother um i couldn't even imagine why my ex-wife would do something knowing the terms that we was on at the time. Um, of course, that, you know, my wife didn't like that. It caused a little bit of friction here and there between us. Um, but one thing was clear was that that situation, everything that happened a little over a year ago was God ordained in purpose. And he did it the way that he needed to do it. And one thing I kept saying, regardless of what, was that, I hate this. I do not like it. It doesn't feel good, but I know God got it. And we just got to let God do what he do. And of course, me and the wife would look at each other and kind of just throw our hands up and go with it, right? Um, you know, my mother, my best friend, my confidant, she's my literally my pastor. Um, she's my mentor, everything. She's been helping me develop into what you see now. Um, God created it like this. We didn't want to be in my ex-wife's space like that, right? Um, just because uh, just where we were, like at that point in time, it just was okay, right? Um, and so what God did was, God said, that very thing that you don't like, that's where your salvation is. That's where your freedom is. That's where your growth is. So I'm going to put it right there in your face. So it's a, it's a slap in my face. It's a slap in the wife's face, right? Um, uh, meanwhile, because I had to de 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 develop this um, sense of betrayal and hurt toward with my mother and her being my confidant and the person that I, my go-to person, God removed her from the situation. So God said this, Miguel, what's going to happen is, is you are going to lean on me. You are going to let me guide you through this situation. You're going to let me take you and your family through this and take you to new heights. Because if you don't, you're going to be in a downward spiral and it ain't going to be good for you. Right? I'm like, okay, I, God, you got to do it. Of course, we had our fits. We had our moments. I actually took my kids out of my mother's daycare. But God said that ain't going to last because I need you back over here. So probably about a month, we was right back over there. And we just let it go. We just let everything flow naturally. Let's fast forward to, let's say, about around Christmas time. Next thing you know, everything's good. We are fantastic. I mean, phenomenal. We are back friends. My wife and the ex-wife, they're friends. I don't even like saying ex-wife no more. I'm just going to refer to her now as my daughter's mother. 
They are tight. We are on a group chat together. And we talk every now and then and regularly, and we laugh and giggle and joke all the time. They be buying each other wine and everything and helping each other out and stuff. I call them BFFs all the time. Like, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It's amazing. It's truly a situation where you can't do anything but say, only God could have done something like this, something this amazing in a year's time. Only God. There's no way in the world. Um, and God placed in my heart the whole time, um, these last few weeks while I've been thinking about this thing was Joel 2, 20 verses 25 through 26, where pretty much is God says, I will restore your lost years, um, that the locusts have eaten. Now what that means is, um, you know, that whole locust eating part, that means you went through some drama. You went through some trials, some tribulations, some pain, some loss, some hurt, all that. In a, in, in, a, in a certain amount of time and you lost from it. But God says, if you relinquish all that over to me, I will restore you. Not only will I restore you, I will make you better than when you went into it and I will increase you, right? Um, which brought me to the next thing that I've been studying was Jeremiah 29, 11, where God says, God declares, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a future filled with hope. Let me tell you, I could have never, ever guessed this going into this process at all, okay? Like, and what this process is, this process is called, it's a process of restoration, which brings me to the title of what we're doing. This is called Restoration, Trust and Abide by the Process, right? Okay, so like I was saying, we fantastic now. We great. Everybody's loving, laughing, communicating. Holidays come around. She, my, my daughter's uh, mother comes over and she's with the family who at one point I didn't even want her to be around and everybody laughing. It's beautiful, right? <sighs> Pay attention to the story because now I'm going to take you to the points. And it's three points that I want y'all to get before this video close out. And the first one is, the first thing that you must understand about going through a rest restoration process is that you must understand. You must know that it will not be easy. You won't like it. It's not going to feel good. It might hurt a little bit. You're going to cry. You're going to moan. You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to run away. You're going to want to turn your back to it because it's just something you do not want to do. But just like I said, I hated it, but I had to go through it. I knew I had to, I had to go through that thing. Not only did I hate it and I knew that I had to go through it, but I also understood that at the end of it, when we finish with it, it's going to be something beautiful at the end of it. And I'm going to come out a different person and become being who I am. I can't be who I am and do what I do on a weekly basis. And whenever God called me to do it and I'm harboring all this stuff because I had all this, I bound myself to those negative feelings, which caused me to have a spiritual and a, a, a mental and physical uh, prison for myself. This whole process was about breaking down those barriers for myself, for my wife, and I'm not sure what my daughter's mother was actually going through, but anything that she had residual, it would help her as well, right? Um, so in recognizing what you're going to go through, you're going to want to quit. You're not going to want to deal with it, but like I said, the if you can master the one thing that you hate doing the most, you will then self-evolve at the end of it, and you can look back and praise God on what it is that you just went through and know that it was only God that, that brought you out of it, and you wouldn't be the person that you are today without being that person, right? Second point that I need you to get is after you understand what the restoration process is, now I need you to trust and abide in the restoration process. Now with that, to abide to something means to yield to it, to endure through it, right? There's going to be some painful steps here that you got to go through in order to get through your go through and to grow up, to self-evolve, to reconcile, to get your health back, to uh, uh, re, if, if it's you know, understand that restoring doesn't mean that you're just going to get back what you lost. I believe that it means that, let's say you you, you did have a marriage that ended, right? That doesn't mean God going to bring y'all back together. That means God going to remove all of the pain, the hurt, and everything out of you, make you new, give you a new heart, give you a new mind, put you in a new spiritual place, so that now when he bless you with the person that you're supposed to be with, y'all y'all evenly yoked, y'all flowing, and y'all going good together. That's what that means, right? Um... You got to go through this process. If you got to go through this process kicking and screaming, that's what you're going to have to do. Let me tell you, 
um, I did a set of three videos that God told me would begin this whole process of restoration for myself, the wife, mother, and uh, daughter's mother, right? That's just the way it was. So I did these videos, and as I did those three videos, and I'm going to plug them in so y'all can go look at them. When I did those three videos, every all that, I started losing all that stuff. The stress, the, the negative feelings, the bondage, I started getting a revelation to what I was dealing with and what was going through with me. And I could, I could, I could stand, I could deliver, I could be, I was made whole again. And then it was just a process for the wife to go through and everybody else. And my wife is going to do a video. It's called running the race. And this is part two to a video she did a while ago, but she's going to give her version of what she was going through on this. So you got to check that out when it come out. But anyway, um, go through the process. Kick through it, cry through it, scream through it, but you cannot quit it. Because to quit it means you're going to go backwards or you're going to stay stuck in dealing with the stuff that you're dealing with. And I don't want that for you. And I know you're tired of it. you stressed out from it. It's the weight of the world on you. And the minute you go through this process and you come out on the other side of this restoration thing, oh my God, you're going to be so polished and so shine and so stress-free. You're going to feel like you can do anything. You can conquer any mountain. That's what it is. And now the third point and final point to going through the whole restoration process is you must relinquish your will over to God. You must give it all to God. And I don't mean, people say that all the time, almost make it clear, say, oh, I'm going to let go and let God. But you're not really doing that. I'm talking about so much so that when you put in a situation that you don't like, that you hate the most, that you can pretty much kind of brush it off and just... Take whatever's coming at you and it not bother you because you understand that God got it and God working it out. And at the end of it, it's, it's all for the glory of God and it's going to shine through and everybody's going to be able to see that, you know what? Wow, that's amazing. You know, we've seen, we've had people that, that have said that I love seeing what you guys are doing and how you guys are growing. It's beautiful. Like I told y'all, I'm here to show you, not to just tell you. I'm, now, yes, I'm speaking from a very common place here. Like, this is something that people are dealing with all over the whole baby mama, baby father thing. The world says that I'm supposed to not like my ex-wife. The world says that I'm supposed to hate whoever she dating, that she's supposed to hate my wife, that we just supposed to clash heads, which in turn would affect our child. It's just not good. That's not the way it's supposed to be done. This is how it should be done. We are a perfect example of what a uh, what co-parenting look like and what a blended family looks like because we chose to everybody was sick and tired of being sick and tired and being in the situation that we in so everybody gave it over to god and when when everybody gave it over to god god worked in a mighty way and brought everybody up I'm the speaker that I am now because I'm going through that. I loved it. Y'all got to fall in love with the process. Like it might not be, it might be painful, but you got to fall in love with it because falling in love with the process, oh man, it's going to bring you some glory from it, right? So three points I had to shoot, to, shoot that to y'all. I'm here to show y'all. I'm a living example. Yes, I use the baby mama whole thing, but this works in any area of your life restoration can begin and if you need restoration in your in, in your life follow these steps that i drop down to you start studying the word on your own get with god and see how god will lead you through your restoration and i guarantee you i get i'm living witness to it my wife is living witness to it my 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 my, my daughter's mother my mother we are all witness to this thing like these are two females that I'm pretty sure both of them thought they would never ever be on the same page and never be able to talk. But now we on a group chat, laughing, giggling, buying wine, probably about to set up a double date night or something. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a beautiful feeling to have that off you and to just flow in love. And that's what this thing is all about. So everybody, we're going to wrap this one up. I'm going to plug in the, the the old videos from last year just so you can kind of see it and watch this one. When my wife dropped her video once again called Running the Race, I want y'all to take a look at it, share it, like it, love it because it's coming from the woman's perspective and I know a lot of people can use it. Until the next time, this is me, your mindset motivator saying I love you, God bless you, y'all have a wonderful day, i see y'all on the next one.